all of these extreme weather events can be linked in some ways to climate change. And therefore, weather forecasting today is a lot more than just predicting monsoon rainfall. The increasingly frequent extreme weather events induced by climate change underline the importance of timely and accurate forecasts for a whole range of weather phenomena. To explain the advances that we've made in this field over the years, as also the challenges that still remain, we have with us this evening Dr. Brithunjay Mahapatra, Director General of the IMD. Dr. Mahapatra, welcome to Green Express. We thank you for your time and we are honored to host you, sir. A lot of Dr. Mahapatra's work over the years has been focused on cyclones. Now, there's a smaller anecdote here. Dr. Mahapatra was born in a small village near Paradeep in Urissa, that's near the mouth of the Mahanadi. In 1971, when he was a six-year-old boy, a strong cyclone hit the area and utterly devastated his village. The memories of that cyclone were seared into his mind. And as that little boy grew up to be one of India's most eminent climate scientists, he retained an enduring interest in cyclones. Dr. Mahapatra was studying cyclones when the super cyclone hit Urissa in 1999, and he was also there when Filin hit 14 years later in 2013. Now, since those years, India has taken enormous strides in predicting cyclones, which has saved thousands of lives. Leading that research, which has led to this progress, has been Dr. Mahapatra, whom the Indian Express many years ago described as India's cyclone man. Speaking with Dr. Mahapatra will be my colleague, Amitabh Sinha. Amitabh, you are the resident editor of our Pune edition, but you are also our editor for science and climate change, who has been covering these areas for many years now. You have attended multiple climate summits around the world, and you are a bit of an expert on this subject yourself. Amitabh will begin with a short presentation, after which he will have his conversation with Dr. Mahapatra. That will last for about 45 minutes, after which Dr. Mahapatra will take some questions from the audience for perhaps another half an hour. Today's explained event is brought to you by our associate partner, Plutus IES. My thanks to our partner. And thank you all for joining us and welcome once again. Amitabh. Thank you, Manajit. Uh, thanks a lot. A uh, very warm welcome to uh, Dr. Mahapatra. Uh, thank you for taking some time out for our readers. A very warm welcome to everyone else who has joined in. Uh, I hope that this session uh, would be fruitful uh, and you would there would be some important takeaways that you can uh, you know, take from here. So I'll uh, I'll begin with a short presentation. Uh, let me just share this screen. Uh, okay. Uh, I hope uh, you can see the screen. Uh, I want to show you a small video that I have taken from uh, YouTube. Uh, it's a video of uh, you know what is called a double pendulum. It's a, it's a pendulum attached to a pendulum, uh, and we are uh, you know all very familiar with how pendulums behave. They behave in a very uh, you know predictable ways. There's uh, they follow a a back and forth uh, sort of motion. But I would like to you to have a look at this. Uh, you know, it's a double pendulum. It's one pendulum attached at the bottom of the other. And suddenly you see this, this doesn't follow a very predictable motion. Uh, the motion is erratic. Uh, the motion is, uh, you know, very unexpected. And also very counterintuitive, you know, sir, you see suddenly it starts spinning in between. Uh, and this, this is not something uh, that we expect how, a, you know, a, a pendulum would behave. And there's nothing special about this setup. In fact, this is a very simple setup. Uh, and, uh, you know, uh, it follows the same laws of physics that we are all aware of. And uh, if 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 we know the uh, no the initial position from where it was left, uh, ideally by knowing the kind of forces that work on this, we should be able to predict the 
motion, the path that this pendulum will take. Uh, but try predicting it for this kind of setup and uh, probably it's going to be uh, next to impossible. If not impossible, then very, very uh, difficult to predict the path. And why is, does something like this happen? I mean, uh, you know, this, this is a very, very simple setup, as I said, but this is probably the simplest setup of what is, uh, you know, called uh, a chaotic system. Uh, you know, uh, chaotic or uh, what do you call it, a complex system. And the complex system is something which in, in which very tiny changes in the initial condition, very, very tiny changes, uh, they lead to very significant changes in the final outcome. So here in this kind of setup, if, if probably, you know, uh, the position of the, from where the pendulum is released, if, it, if that changes by, say, thousandth of a centimeter or maybe even smaller, uh, the final outcome, the, the, the path that the uh, uh, pendulum takes is likely to be very drastically different uh, from uh, other positions. So this is uh, what is uh, called uh, chaotic systems. You would probably have heard of uh, the butterfly effect as well, uh, you know, used to describe uh, these kind of systems. And even though this is, a, a you know, something which is not very intuitive. Uh, it's counterintuitive, but uh, there are lots of similar kind of systems that we are uh, probably familiar with. Uh, you know, the role of dice, for example, even though there are only six possible outcomes in the role of dice, uh, you know, the, the dice, we can never make the dice, you know, roll in exactly the same manner. Uh, you know, it, it's never the same, even though the final outcome is only one out of the six possibilities. Uh, you know, the flows of uh, liquids and gases, turbulence is another uh, very uh, familiar chaotic systems. Uh, chaos theory is now very uh, widely applied to sociology, uh, to uh, you know, the world of finance as well, to predict the behavior in the stock markets, to predict how the, uh, you know, there would be a increase or decrease in the population of certain species, especially the, uh, you know, smaller uh, uh, species, smaller animals. And even the COVID-19 pandemic is actually, uh, uh, you know, can be uh, considered to be a chaotic system. In fact, there have been papers that have been written on, on uh, you know, the chaotic nature of COVID pandemic, COVID-19 pandemic. So by now, I think, I think you would have guessed where I'm uh, arriving at, whether uh, is a chaotic system. Uh, you know, uh, it is this kind of a system. It never repeats itself. Uh, even though we might think that, you know, the weather is very similar to yesterday, uh, it's never, it never comes down to the same parameters. There's, there's always some change. There are very large uncertainties involved. The uncertainties in even picking the initial data and reading the initial data. And as they go through computations, uh, and there are like hundreds of iterations or probably thousands of iterations that they go through during the computation, uh, you know, the uncertainties get very magnified. So that's why it's a system that it's, it's very difficult to model and predict. In fact, the whole branch of chaos theory, actually, in mathematics, uh, that originated out of uh, the efforts to uh, model the behavior of weather. Uh, you know weather patterns across the world. So this is this is a typical uh, chaotic system. So even as we uh, hope for a better weather forecast, and that, that's that's the effort uh, that we should be able to uh, forecast weather uh, better and more accurately. I think it it's uh, uh, it's it's good to be aware uh, that there are certain limitations within the science itself. Uh, atmospheric sciences and especially the weather forecasting part of it uh, is not an exact science and that's why when we get the forecasts uh, it's not uh, it's never accurate forecast we we always talk in terms of probabilities you know the possibility of an event happening and what are the chances so uh, we can strive to uh, improve the accuracy but uh, I think 100% accuracy is never going to, uh, you know, is not achievable. So with that uh, kind of background, uh, we, we go to Dr. Mahapatra. Uh, and uh, I, I would ask him, uh, Dr. Mahapatra, uh, welcome once again. Would you like to make an opening remark? And uh, then we can go ahead with questions. 
you are muted doctor mahapatra uh, thank you very much uh, amitabh ji you have um, uh, very well uh, brought out uh, the theme of the discussion today there are many chaotic systems and weather is chaotic and the weather is a by product of the interaction among the various forces within the atmosphere ocean and the earth system and many of them are non linear in nature and as a result the weather forecasting is a science of non linear mathematics or non linear physics and hence therefore it is based on the equations which can be solved in a non linear way as you have discussed in the beginning when you try to solve a system which is chaotic in nature and you are adopting a methodology which has the inherent limitations and errors because of its limitation in finding out the correct solutions or exact solutions so you are certainly we have the limitations to find out the exact solutions and in case of weather the limitations to find out the exact forecast so therefore worldwide people try to move to provide probabilistic weather forecast based on the most possible advanced theory of nonlinear mathematics and when you go for a nonlinear mathematics and try to solve the equations involving the nonlinearity in the atmosphere in question you have to utilize the observations from the various components of this earth system science to define the initial condition of the atmosphere in the ocean and based on this initial conditions the equations are solved numerically to provide the forecast for coming minutes or hours or days or a season i both with the advancement of the branch of the science related to weather forecasting and with the advance of the monitoring and prediction tools and technology over the globe for detecting the various parameters related with weather forecasting the ongoing improvement in weather forecasting will continue in the years to come and will be moving towards better and better predictions i thank the indian express group for inviting me inviting me to this discussion and giving me an opportunity to be a part of this exchange of views and information on weather forecasting and climate change thank you so uh, dr mahapatra my, my first question actually uh, there, there is an impression uh, that i have encountered and probably you also would have uh, encountered over the years and that hasn't changed despite the fact that there probably has been a tremendous improvement in our forecasting ability the impression that somehow some developed countries provide much better forecast than we are able to do uh, is that a correct impression uh, and if true then what are there any additional complications in forecasting weather events over the indian subcontinent when we compare the performance of weather forecasting over the globe you will only find two types of weather systems one is the tropical weather systems occurring over the tropical region and the other set is the extra tropical weather systems for example tropical cyclones monsoons thunderstorms in tropical belt are the tropical weather systems the warm fronts the cold fronts extra tropical cyclones are the weather systems which occur over the extra tropical region that is mid latitude and high latitude regions like northern part of usa europe canada so if you compare the 
basic nature of the weather systems developing in the tropical region and the tropical region there is a large difference while the tropical weather systems are more or less associated with the convective process of the atmosphere the extra tropical systems are basically the frontal systems that means you will have the warm fronts and cold fronts which basically develop because of the temperature difference over the region on the other hand the tropical weather systems develop because of the intense heating over the region the process is convection and hence the convective cloud development plays a dominant role in the genesis evolution characteristics propagation movement of the weather systems developing in the tropical region so while the extra tropical weather systems are very systematic periodic easy to predict the tropical weather systems because of this convective nature are difficult to predict and therefore i will say the predictability of the tropical weather systems is less compared to extra tropical systems or in your term the chaotic behavior is more in the tropical belt as compared to the extra tropical belt now if i compare the tropical weather systems so india is confronted with the tropical cyclones and also usa japan australia and if you compare the forecasting of the tropical cyclones over the different ocean basins you will find india is second to none and munaj has correctly pointed out in the beginning how accurately in the last 10 years if you see the cyclone has been predicted with respect to genesis track intensity point and time of landfall and associated rainfall wind and storm surge and tidal wave inundation in the coastal belt as a result the number of loss of lives has been reduced to less than 100 due to any cyclone which has crossed the coast uh, during this period there has been pinpointed a forecast which has been highlighted by uh, many leading agencies in the globe including united nations world meteorological organization even the other countries have tried to imbibe the cyclone forecasting as it is an example to the globe apart from that if you just look at um, the monsoon forecasting with respect to the extreme weather if you just look at uh, we have the monsoon season june to september we experience the heavy rainfall leading to the floods landslides urban flooding sometimes mass flooding or sometimes the cloud burst the basic objective has been to improve the heavy rain for forecasting so that we can minimize the impact in terms of all these uh, disastrous wave if you just look at uh, the forecast accuracy of the heavy rain for 24 hours ahead you will find that at present the forecast accuracy is about 80% and if i compare 10 years back it was about 60% so there has been 20% improvement in the forecast accuracy of the heavy rainfall associated with the monsoon over the region similarly if i talk about the thunderstorms uh, which are predominant in india because of this uh, tropical nature especially during the monsoon season and also during the pre monsoon season you will find that the system has been developed by the minister of earth sciences in the agriculture department and its sister organizations to provide the forecast on thunderstorms the potential zone of occurrence five days ahead and on district level 24 hours ahead and 3 hours ahead we provide the location specific forecast for thunderstorms the accuracy of thunderstorm warning if you just look at 3 hours ahead it is about 85 90% i just want to mention that thunderstorm is a very small scale event with um, a life period of about half an hour to 3 hours and its size is about 1 km to 10 km so therefore considering the smaller size and smaller life period it is not possible to provide forecast 5 days ahead or 3 days ahead so worldwide this it is expected to provide forecast on a shorter time scale and in that process if you compare our system of forecasting of thunderstorms is comparable to all the leading countries like usa or europe or australia i just want to mention that lightning is a major killer in thunderstorms and india is one of very few countries in the world there are many there are only five six countries which provide the lightning forecast 
and India is one of them. For the last three years, we are providing the lightning forecast and warning on two categories. 48 hours in advance, we would identify the hotspot where lightning is likely to go there. And on the day of occurrence, we are providing the lightning warning every three hours for 1,085 stations over the country. And each and every district, that means 739 districts of the country. In addition to that, there is a mobile app, Damini, which provides the location specific information about occurrence of lightning during past five minutes, 10 minutes, 15 minutes, and also the lightning forecast for next 45 minutes. So therefore, we have come up a long way to provide the very smaller scale severe weather event like thunderstorm and lightning forecast, and hence its impact on the society. Uh, similarly, if you consider the heat waves, you will remember that there were a large number of deaths um, in the beginning of 2000s and even in 2015. And thereafter, Minister of Our Sciences and the Political Department introduced a seamless forecasting system for heat wave, providing the seasonal temperature forecast, probability of heat waves, and also it's followed by the extended range forecast of heat wave spells of next 15 days. It is followed by the seven days forecast of the likely occurrence of heat wave or severe heat wave. And then it is followed by everyday bulletin twice a day, giving the information about the condition of temperature and possibility of heat wave. So while doing that, it has resulted in reduction of loss of life due to heat wave. And recent years, it has been less than 10 for the last two years. Similarly, we have also gone for the cold wave predictions to provide the information for the area where you usually experience the cold wave. What I want to say that um, over the years, it has been the attempt of India Meteorological Department to provide a seamless forecast for all types of severe weather events, starting with the small scale thunderstorm and lightning, squalls, and hailstorms, to the large scale phenomena like monsoonal. Heavy rainfall events in the long casting scale, in the short to medium range scale, and of to extended range scale. So these three attempts, which have been taken off during the last 10 years, to provide a seamless forecast in a shorter span to a short to medium range span and extended range span has certainly helped to minimize the loss of lives and property in the country. Not only that, it has also helped to minimize the loss of lives in the region because India Meteorological Department acts as a regional leader to provide the severe weather guidance to the countries in the South Asia, Southeast Asia, and the Middle East. But as you told correctly, that still there are gap areas, and Minister of Our Sciences, India Meteorological Department, and sister organizations are working cohesively as a unit to address the requirement of fulfilling the gaps in observational systems, computing systems, numerical modeling systems, and hence the forecasting system. I just want to mention here that at present, the entire country is not covered with the protocol. So there is scope. If you really want to detect each and every thunderstorm with the Doppler radar, the entire country has to be covered by the Doppler radar. So at present, we have got 27 Doppler radars with three from this row, total 30 radars cover the country, but still there is scope to cover and we are planning to cover the country, especially in the hilly regions like Northwestern Himalaya, Northeast Himalayas, where we will have 11 and eight Doppler radars respectively. In addition to that, in the plain area of the country, we will have 10 more C band radars. So, by that way, we will have um, about 29 Doppler radars in the next two to three years, which will fill up the gap in the pro radar coverage. Similarly, if you go to the specific impact of this weather over the urban areas where you need more dense observations, so we have planned to fill up this gap with at least one automated weather stations or automated gauges at a resolution of four kilometer into four kilometer. 
And that will be taken off on priority basis with the mega cities. We've come up with um, such facilities with Mumbai, Delhi, Chennai, and we are trying for Calcutta also. So with respect to the forecast, if I just come up, the forecast being provided with a model visualization of 12 kilometers. A global model is being run by Minister of Arts Sciences. Two global models are being run by Minister of Arts Sciences in deterministic form and also probabilistic form. To provide the probabilistic forecast of various severe weather events at a resolution of 12 kilometer, which is representative of a block. Now, at present, we are providing forecast at district level, also the block level. But if you really plan to have the forecast sub block level, second chart level, we have to improve the resolution of these models up to about five kilometers, which is the next plan and strategy of the department and the ministry. Similarly, when you go for location specific forecast, we have a high resolution model with the resolution of three kilometers, and we are planning for a one kilometer model so that we can have very specific information for a given urban area or a given stakeholder. With this type of modeling strategy, we have to go for a high performance computing system. At present, we have a computing system of 10 petaflop, and we're planning to add it with 15 petaflop during the next two to three years. With this computing facility and modeling facility, we can go for sub panchayat level, or panchayat level and sub block level forecast. And also, we can go for augmenting our impact based forecast. But if you just look at the forecast which we issue at present for the last two years, is impact-oriented. That means we not only say that what the weather will be, but also we say what the weather will do. But that information, whatever we are providing, that is full-fledged with respect to tropical cyclones. It has to be further improved with the information on socioeconomic indicators, with the information on geophysical indicators, so that we can have a comprehensive, comprehensive analysis of meteorological parameters, hydrological parameters, geophysical parameters, and socioeconomic indicators to assess the hazard, vulnerability, and the risk in a granular manner. And we can provide this information to all the stakeholders and disaster managers. So this is at being attempted, and we have targeted the four severe weather events, tropical cyclones, heavy rainfall during monsoon season, heat wave, and thunderstorms. Tropical cyclone is almost uh, has been uh, taken off with a joint effort by National Resource Management Authority, state governments, and IMD and other agencies of Ministry of Arts Sciences. Similar approach is being developed to provide heavy rainfall warning, impact based, and thunderstorm warning as impact based. So after doing that, we are also planning to go for this improvement in sectoral applications because weather and climate plays a dominant role to improve the socioeconomic condition of the country. It has certainly improved in the past years, but still there is scope to improve further. For example, in power sector, the power sector has gained a maximum because of the improvement with the forecasting. But still, considering the objective and strategy of the government of India, we have to um, harness the energy from the non-conventional sources like solar energy and wind energy. For this purpose, weather and climate will play a dominant role and we have to plan for forecasting in these sectors. In addition to that, we have to go for health sector. Already we have started providing forecast for malaria, dengue, but we have to go a long way to provide a validated forecast for the different weather and climate related diseases in the country, which can help in minimizing loss in the health sector. Similarly, we have to go for transport sector, national highways, railways, the water transport also can be augmented with information in weather and climate. Environment plays a dominant role. Air quality, early warning system has been introduced for Delhi, and we want to introduce it with better monitoring of the environment and providing the information for the air quality, existing air quality, and also the, the forecast informations. So like this, the agriculture sector, which is the backbone of the maximum people in this country, has been provided the enough support in terms of agromet advisory services, but still we're planning for Grameen Krishi Mosam Seva so that we can reach out at village level with the forecasting services for agriculture purposes. So like this, uh, we have to augment the existing sectoral applications so that social conditions of the country can be improved further.
So, Dr. Uh, Mahapatra, one of one of the big concerns right now uh, is is the kind of events that uh, you know that took place in Maharashtra last week, uh, starting 2013. Uh, you know, every year, every year without fail, there has been a, an extreme uh, rainfall event. You know, and that has led to uh, all sorts of flooding events. We have seen floods in Jammu and Kashmir. We have seen floods in Chandigarh, in Bangalore, in Chennai, Mumbai, Assam. Uh, all, all, and, and these floods have not been a result of uh, sustained rainfall over a large period of time. These have been a result of very short bursts of rainfall, almost like record-breaking rainfall over two or three days. And the, uh, there has been a you know, huge amount of inundation uh, in large areas. So <clears throat> now my question uh, has three parts, and I would I would uh, like you to uh, you know answer all those three. Number one, uh, what is the assessment for these kind of extreme weather events? Uh, what exactly? Uh, I mean, what are the uh, things that are likely to happen in terms of extreme weather events? Not just in rainfall, uh, but also other extreme weather events, heat waves. Uh, we have seen, you know, the uh, frequency increase many fold in Europe, for example. Uh, also, different other kinds of uh, extreme weather events. So, one is what, where are the trends leading to in terms of extreme weather events? Number two uh, is, you know, part of that you have already addressed in uh, this kind of thing. But I would still, uh, you know, if you could be more specific on, uh, say, an extreme weather uh, uh, rainfall event happens in Mumbai. Is it possible for us, for example, to say not just for tomorrow a very heavy rainfall is likely to happen in Mumbai, but instead of that, is it possible to say that tomorrow between 12 o'clock and 8 o'clock, uh, you know, a rainfall which is likely to be 30 millimeters or above uh, is going to take place for about two hours in Santa Cruz area of Bombay? Is that kind, can that uh, specific information be forecast, right? And number three, the third part of the uh, question is, if such events get, uh, become more and more frequent, become more and more regular, then like we have an evacuation plan for, uh, you know, uh, in, in cases of cyclones and tsunami, do we have to plan for evacuation at least in the low from the low lying areas uh, in cases of urban flooding for example is that a possibility a distinct possibility that we are staring at for future so three parts uh, let me know if you forget any one of them I'll okay uh, thank you i will uh, try to answer you part by part now uh, coming to uh, the trends in extreme weather events yeah Certainly, the global warming has been detected over the globe. There has been rise in temperature over the globe by about 1.2 degrees Celsius during the uh, past 100 years. And considering India, yes, certainly there is also rise in temperature over India, and it is about 0.62 degrees Celsius in the past 100 years. But this uh, rise is not uniform. The rise is more in northern parts of the country, central and eastern parts, and less in peninsular India. But it is true that whenever you have got this um, global rise in temperature and rise in temperature over India, it has the impact on the extreme weather events. I'll uh, discuss one by one the impact of the extreme weather events. Um, to begin with, um, these extreme weather events have the impact in the sense that because of the rise in temperature, which is occurring not only at the surface of the atmosphere or the lower level of the atmosphere, but also in the troposphere. So as the temperature increases in the troposphere, the water holding capacity of the troposphere increases. And study says that with the rise in temperature of one degree Celsius, the water holding capacity or the moisture holding capacity of the atmosphere increases by about 7%. Now, if an atmosphere has the capacity to hold more moisture, certainly that atmosphere will have more capacity to cause more rainfall. So therefore, when there is a monsoon season, and when we have got enough moisture in the atmosphere, in the, in 
in the backdrop of the global warming, we've got the enhanced temperature in the surface and as well as the entire troposphere. So probability of occurrence of more heavy rainfall is higher. And the study shows that in the past years, the study shows that there has been increase in the frequency of heavy rainfall events. That means the events when the 24 hour accumulated rainfall in a particular day is more than 15 centimeters. So that type of days are increasing over the tropical belt as a whole in the globe and especially over the tropical region like India. It is more evident in the central part of the country, starting with Maharashtra, Gujarat, Odisha, and uh, West Bengal. So uh, the phenomena is very simple. Um, when a particular low pressure area is developing over Beva Bengal, it is moving across central India along the monsoon trough. In association with the low pressure area, the convective cloud develops and hence it causes rainfall, leading to heavy rainfall or extreme heavy rainfall. But when you have got the global warming, the extra rise in temperature that leads to extra holding capacity of moisture, and hence the more intense convective cloud development in association with low pressure systems, and hence you can expect more extreme rainfall. So that extreme has been detected, and uh, as you told in Maharashtra, also it has been detected. So I will say this rise in extreme weather event, which occurs is in association with the global warming, that is rising temperature, and also the occurrence of the low pressure systems. And sorry to interrupt, but uh, are there any areas within the country which are less likely to be impacted with extreme weather events? Yeah, I'll just tell you that um, uh, while telling so, uh, the number of light rainfall and moderate rainfall days are decreasing. Hmm. Number of extreme rainfall events are increasing or days are increasing. But the total rainfall during monsoon season does not show any trend. It is almost uh, constant. That means uh, when it is raining, it is raining heavily. When it is not raining, it is not raining at all. Right. So um, this trend, as I told you, yes, it is um, uh, quite significant across the central belt uh, of the country. And uh, it has been observed that there is decreased rainfall activity over Kerala and um, over um, Jharkhand and adjoining areas. Also, there is increase in rainfall activity in the monsoon season over say, West Bengal, West UP, Jammu and Kashmir, and here the entire part of Karnataka and Royal Sima, Coastal Andhra Pradesh. So, though we have got a rising trend, its impact is different in different regions of the state. Now, when you consider the heat wave, the number of heat wave days has increased. In the past, if you consider about say 1950 onwards, and um, the increase is again more in the region where the heat core zone is, that in central and northern parts of the country has more rate of increase in the temperature, resulting in more heat wave conditions. At the same time, the cold air conditions are likely to decrease because of the increase in temperature. If you consider the lightning, yes, it also shows the rising trend along with the rise in thunderstorms because of the rise in moisture content of the atmosphere and also rise in temperature. Considering the frequency of cyclones, yes, the frequency of cyclones shows an increasing trend, especially the intense cyclone. The frequency of intense cyclones shows an increasing trend over the Arabian Sea. The cyclones over the Bay of Bengal does not show any significant trend. Arabian Sea cyclones are showing increase the intense ones. That means the cyclones which are defined as extreme receiver cyclones, that frequency is increasing since 1990 onwards. Now, coming to the projections, so what is going to happen, we are expecting that if we go as usual, the temperature can rise further. And if you go to the enhanced uh, contribution of greenhouse gases, the temperature can further rise, even can it can go up to 4 to 5 degrees Celsius rise by the end of uh, the 21st century. So with this rise in temperature, certainly the heat wave conditions is likely to increase. The area, the duration, and the frequency of heat wave conditions likely to increase. The monsoon rainfall, it is projected that it will increase, um, and hence the events leading to the extremely heavy rainfall are also expected to increase. The rainstorm events, usually the events which lead to the floods, are also expected 
to increase and it has also increased during the past years if you consider the data so so that means the extreme events will be more frequent and can be more intense and can be more durable if you go by the projected scenarios of um, different pathways uh, concentration pathways that is rcp 4.5 or rcp 8.5 uh, and if you go to business as usual at least there will be still rise in temperature because of the life period of various greenhouse gases so therefore the contribution part is cop plants for containing the rise in temperature within 2 degree celsius by 21st century and within that temperature rise also there will be all these extreme weather events and we have to go for managing these extremely heavy rainfall events now coming to uh, your uh, second uh, part of the questions uh, like the prediction of the extreme weather events yes yes we provide the heavy rainfall predictions in three categories so like heavy rainfall very heavy rainfall and extremely heavy rainfall and these predictions are um, provided um, utilizing latest uh, models and array of models we have uh, two global models um, deterministic to probabilistic models and to regional models we also consider the international models we utilize a decision support system and accordingly each and every model production is evaluated with a decision support system and value is added by the exchange of knowledge experience and expertise by the forecast from 29 forecasting officers across the country every day for about 2 hours starting at 10:30 and finally forecast is generated and impact also estimated and uh, while doing so as you go towards extremes and extremes the occurrence is very rare and as the event becomes rare the probability of prediction also gradually decreases so we have been able to predict the spell for example if you just look at 17 to 23 um, of july the heavy rainfall spell which affected konkan madhya maharashtra area of uh, madhya maharashtra area so this spell was predicted we could predict the occurrence of this wet spell and extreme heavy rainfall accordingly press leaders issued and we could give the district wise rainfall forecast but when you come to location specific information providing information for 30 cm or 40 cm rainfall at uh, 24 hours it is certainly there is a limitation it is difficult at present we are providing extreme heavy rainfall with a criteria that anything more than 20 cm so um, prediction specifying the exact amount of 35 cm or 40 cm at a specific location um, is really difficult with the current state of affair of the global modeling and the regional modeling is is it possible to do with uh, more resources uh, and uh, more computing power yeah we are trying that if you just look at special for mumbai uh, minister of earth science and india metal department have ventured into Uh, providing this type of information so we have established an urban flood early warning system for mumbai so you see when you go for flood it, it takes into consideration not only the rainfall but also the past rainfall it takes into consideration the river discharge and runoff it also takes into consideration the soil moisture it takes into consideration the land in the land cover of the particular city drainage system so many parameters so what we have done actually we have gone for a collaborative approach with uh, mumbai municipal corporation and various constituents of the state of our sciences urban flood warning system has been developed where every 15 minute the information is provided about the actual occurrence of rainfall based on about 150 rain gauges in the city at the same time also we have got the radar images we have got the satellite images all these images are used and utilizing the model products we are also providing forecast as i say we have come up with this flood warning system it is in a, um in operation from last year it can be improved further the objective is as you told to provide the information at what time with what intensity at what place the rainfall will occur so that more impact information can be provided to the public and the students at present from this urban flood warning system we are providing forecasted ward level each ward of the mumbai municipal corporation is being provided this information system is also kept in mumbai municipal corporation And, and 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 the prediction also uh, does it include the uh, possible inundation levels what areas are likely to be inundated by yes, what yes. amount yes it provides the flood depth hmm. because the system which is uh, uh, in place it takes into consideration the topography it takes into consideration the um, geography of the place 
So therefore, flood depth is um, analyzed and it is provided as for different words while the forecast is provided for rainfall. But in addition to that, what we've done for actually, we also introduced a new system called a South Asia Flash Flood Guidance System. And in this Flash Flood Guidance System, we are providing the guidance for 30,000 water sets. That also includes Mumbai and Maharashtra and all entire country. We are providing this information not only to India, but also all the countries in South Asia. So in this system also, we are taking care of the rainfall and the standing water, or you can say the past rainfall. And then also we are considering the soil moisture. And we are providing two types of information here. One is the flood threat, other one is the flood risk. So this guidance is being provided to Central Water Commission so that they can go for the flood warning. And so part three of the question, whether uh, uh, if, if such events become much more regular, then do we have to devise kind of evacuation plans uh, you know, the kind of uh, which exist for uh, cyclones or tsunami. Yeah. Mean, is that the only way to save lives? Now? Yeah, certainly. Uh, if you uh, ask me, I will say that, yes, that is the ultimate objective. We should have the response actions associated with the trigger generated by the weather forecast or the rainfall forecast. So for that purpose, we have to bridge the two wages. One is the weather forecasting information being provided by India Meteorology Department. Other one is the information from the geospatial scenario, including the various types of secondary hazard information, like, say, for example, in this case, landslides or land sleeps or land sinks or the floods, and also the socioeconomic information say, about the drainage system, about the population density, about the um, infrastructure like hospitals, roads, bridges, culverts, railways, national highways river systems. So all this data have to be integrated in a digital format. And if that is so, then we can have a very comprehensive analysis of the impact of the heavy rainfall, and we can provide the information which slum area or which particular pocket of the city will be inundated of to what extent and what will be its impact in terms of um, uh, the people in terms of the infrastructure. Then you also need uh, for development uh, something else. For example, when you go for a coastal city like uh, Mumbai, you need the component from the astronomical tides because, say, for example, in a full moon day and part of the city is below the um, tide levels. Therefore, sometimes without anything also, there can be astronomical tides. And also you need information about the river distance, river runoff, therefore hydrological modeling and hydrodynamical modeling. So a system should be in place where you will have all the components leading to combination of weather forecasting, hydrological forecasting, hydrodynamical forecasting, and here sea level forecast, ocean wave forecast, and at the same time, the geospatial platform to compare, comprehend, and analyze all these information. We are working in that direction. For this purpose, we are collaborating with various agencies like Indian Species Organizations, and um, Ministry of Art Sciences, and also Survey of India, and in case within the Ministry of Sciences, National Center for Postal Research, and of course, the Municipal City Corporations. Yeah, so that actually, I mean, uh, that brings me to uh, uh, the next question that I was planning to ask in any case, is, uh, you know, the, the impacts of climate change, specifically over India, uh, the assessment part, the risk assessment, is something that we uh, uh, no, uh, we we don't have very good uh, 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 information available from the IPCC reports. Uh, at least till the last one, uh, they don't have regional sort of impact assessments. Uh, are we doing our own impact assessment? In fact, the uh, the new IPCC report, which is due to be out this year, uh, that probably would give some regional impact assessments, but. Uh, Internally, are we doing a good impact assessment of the uh, of, of climate change? What is likely to happen? I, uh, no, I understand it's not entirely the job of IMD, but you would be involved. So, uh, are we doing that kind of an impact, a thorough impact assessment of climate change over the Indian uh, region? Yeah, therefore, there are different institutes and agencies associated with. Um, the climate change and its impact assessment. Um, while Ministry of Environment, Forest, and Climate Change is the nodal agency, 
India Meteorology Department provides the statement about the detection part. So how is the change during the past? And we have Center for Climate Change Research, um, CCCR, in Indian Astrotropical Meteorology, which is engaged in the research on climate change. And uh, recently, we have a lot of um, a book on the various aspects of the climate change and the various projections, its impact in terms of um, the extreme weather is also taken into considerations. But uh, the impact in terms of the socioeconomic activities, et cetera, yes, it has to be taken off. Uh, but the scientific analysis of the nature of variations and the projections depend upon the various pathways like RCT 4.5 or RCT 8.5 are being taken off uh, by the Center for Climate Change Research in Astrotropical Meteorology of Ministry of Arts Sciences. So you'll be happy to know that um, for that intercomparison of the climate change models, um, India is also participating for the first time from this center. So uh, another thing about uh, you know, specifically uh, IMD itself, uh, now going forward from say, say five years or 10 years from here, what is it exactly that you are striving for? I mean, five years from now, uh, what should be the weather forecasting uh, system for India look like? What what are the things that we would be able to do? What are the things that we probably still would not be able to do? Yeah. Basically, uh, we in IMD are planning for uh, three objectives. The first objective is that um, no severe weather should go undetected and unpredicted. When I say no severe weather, uh, as I was discussing in the beginning, we are at a very good accuracy level, a reasonable accuracy level with respect to the um, cyclones, heat waves, to a large extent, the heavy rainfall and the thunderstorms. But still, as I was telling, that country is not covered with the Doppler radar so far. So therefore, the, the first and foremost objective in the next five years will be to have an observational system where we can have the detection of each and every severe weather event, especially the thunderstorms and lightning. And also for its prediction, as I was planning, next five years, our objective will be to have a global model with a resolution of five kilometers so that we can go for prediction of the small scale events at very granular manner with longer lead periods. The high-resolution location-specific forecast should be provided so far. Almost at every one kilometer, we can have the generation of the forecast so that we can meet out the requirement at the VLS level. At least to begin with, we should go for block and panchayat level. The second objective is that the impact-based forecast we should have a very realistic impact based forecast utilizing the hazard, vulnerability, and risk analysis for four significant severe weather events, including tropical cyclones, heavy rainfall, thunderstorm, and heat wave. These are the four important events which are leading to the loss of lives and properties. We have been very successful to minimize loss of lives. And due to heat wave and cyclones, but the loss of property is yet to be minimized. And globally, people are trying to minimize the property, and we will also try to do that with this impact-based forecast and risk-based warning. The third objective is that, I used to say that it should be har har mausam, har har mausam. That means we should reach out to each and every person with the weather information so that he can utilize it for all its socio-economic activities. When I say to reach out each and every person, when I say to reach out each and every time, that means we should generate a forecast which can reach the people at least every hour. So target is the next five years, we should have the weather information generated every hour to reach out the people. We should have a system of communication where the information can be reached easily by the general public and the Western managers. To do that, we have to go for development of the various mobile apps. We have to go to development of the observational systems and communication systems. 
and we are working in that direction and i hope we'll meet to that and we can augment accordingly the various sector applications you know that that's a question the last part that you addressed uh, on communication and you know developing mobile apps is a question that a lot of uh, people within our audience have been asking uh, so it's good that you answered that that whether there are simple apps that people can uh, you know look at uh, to know whether in their area also uh, what exactly is imd doing to uh, you know make your communication uh, simpler and easy to understand so basically actionable uh, information so if i get the information even if i there is an app and i get an information uh, is there a system to you know make me realize what do i need to do okay so there is something that is going to happen this is the kind of weather that's likely to uh, you know take place over my area in the next 24 hours what is it that i need to do so that kind of actionable information is something that uh, you know some people in our audience also want to uh, ask actually yeah amitabh ji i completely agree with uh, this view the impact weather forecast will be an actionable forecast just like the cyclone warning is being provided as an actionable forecast and warning it provides the impact it provides the action suggested by general forecast managers we are planning for similar action oriented programs for the severe weather events already we have started for last two years if you just look at we are providing the expected impact also we are providing the response action to be taken by the general public and the disaster managers for a particular district for which we are issuing the forecast but there is a long way to go in this sector because as i told you it needs a voluminous data like the data on the secondary hazards for landslides for example there is no landslide warning system in the country at present we do not have the landslide data in digital format at present and we need the informations about the socioeconomic indicators in digital format for each and every city you need the information about the digital elevation of a particular place you also need the information about digital surface modeling so all these informations are being gathered various agencies in the country are working together and i hope will be certainly able by next 5 years to to combine all these informations by working together and providing this information about the response sections but already we have made a beginning for the response sections it will improve further over the years with the digital platform the thing is that we have developed that type of digital platform for comparing and collecting all these informations while doing so you have got lot of data people talk of big data now and imd is a big data center for quite a long time and over the years you will find that we have made the data available to the public about the disaster managers data is available in the platform of imd website and anybody wants to do and research data is provided so what i want to say that the imd is open for collaboration we have been collaborating with the people and as a result there has been development of um, various mobile apps and uh, this mobile apps i'll tell you we have done for uh, one damini for lightning we have done for mosam for general weather we have done for megdu for uh, agriculture we have the mobile app for mumbai we have mobile app for pune so we have a mobile app for different purposes so what i want to say that um, this mobile apps also provide information in different local languages and you will have to know that for last two years considering the demand of the public we have gone for social media all the social media are being used by imd and uh, we have gone for the multilingual approach in all the centers of imd you will find the audio visual capsule in local language and also in english from the center place also we are providing daily video indicating the expected weather and the weather realized during the past so we are working further we will improve the mobile app system further to reach out to each and every sector and you will be happy to know that also we have gone for some kind of novel ideas like crowdsourcing so we expect that the weather forecasting can be improved only if there is a partnership with each and every person in this country each and every person when he gets up or she gets up from the bed he looks at the sky and he himself or herself provides the forecast okay today is sunny the morning shows the day but certainly it may not be so so therefore we want to involve the people for weather forecasting so we have started with crowdsourcing you can find out in imd website the icon for crowdsourcing just go to the website 
can click any particular weather what you are experiencing in your region, we will get it. We will utilize it. We will provide you the forecast for your region. We will provide the climate weather for your forecast. It will also help in improving the model information. So this uh, crowdsourcing is also being augmented with a mobile app. Similarly, for each and every weather event, we will have a mobile app. So thank you. Okay, so we will now uh, open uh, uh, for audience questions. Uh, so I'll call out the names and they will ask a question and you can respond. So uh, the first question uh, is from Zareen. Uh, is Zareen here? Hello? Yeah, Zareen? Yeah, am I audible? Yeah, please go ahead. Good evening, sir. It's uh, evening. very nice uh, listening to you. And uh, I must say that, uh, Mr. Amitabh Sina, you have put very good questions. I mean, almost you have put all the questions I had in my mind. But still, I would uh, want to know that, you know, uh, weather forecasting is not that accurate. I mean, I live in Delhi, so I know that in the month of June, how eagerly we wait for, you know, rains. And uh, in the last month, uh, I heard four different dates that, there will be nine. They will be heavy rain on 9th of June, then 12th of June, then 15th on June, then 20th of June. So my question is that, that we we all know that uh, how inaccurate the weather forecasting is. I am sorry, I humbly say that, but I also want to know when we are going to uh, like take the uh, accountability for giving a false information. I mean, as a public, I want to know that if I have been given a wrong information, then when uh, will the system uh, come and take the responsibility? I mean, if there will be no accountability, then it will be like, uh, uh, I mean, some information has been passed and uh, people don't pay attention. Maybe Mr. Senha agree with me that people sometimes don't pay attention what uh, weather forecasting is saying because... Uh, uh, you know, mostly the information is inaccurate, and then there is no accountability about um, on that. I want to know about this. Okay, so uh, I um, I do not agree completely whatever is the observations, but I also agree to some extent uh, in the fact that yes, as you go to a smaller and smaller region, the uncertainty in prediction increases, and again, when you go for prediction of heavy rainfall in a very specific location, if you want to know then also the uncertainty increases. But the good thing is that over the years, if you just look at, if you compare 10 years before and now, there has been a tremendous improvement in prediction of all types of weather events, including the heavy rainfall events. And if you compare again within the different types of severe weather events, say for example, if you compare heavy rainfall prediction with heat wave or cyclone, certainly the heavy rainfall during monsoon season is more chaotic, and is more difficult to predict. But there is a ray of hope because it is improving, and I am sure it will also improve further. So if you go by the large scale systems, which really causes the loss of lives and properties, so that is um, being predicted not only on day to day scale, but also in the spell manner, say, so predicting the occurrence of the heavy spell or occurrence of the dry spell, that helps the various sectors, including the disaster managers. Okay, our, our next question is from B.K. Singh. Uh, Mr. B.K. Singh? I'm here. Okay, please go ahead. Sir, good afternoon. Nice to talk to you across uh, on Zoom call. Uh, you have uh, stated already uh, a lot of things uh, that we know of. I keep on telling people that the kind of scientific knowledge, the kind of uh, you know, scientific background, the instrumentation that you have is, is very difficult for anybody in India particularly to match the capability of IMD either in way of, uh, by way of observation or by way of prediction. You know, but in the private sector that we, uh, I represent and uh, we are in the weather, uh, you know, uh, on the, particularly on agriculture side, I've been working, trying to help the farmers. Now, weather is a very important part of the total picture. Now, 
the farmer has to uh, you know associate it with uh, weather and sowing weather and harvest weather and fertilizer application and all so the kind of information that uh, we we want to generate and give to the farmers of course you have got uh, your own app you are doing this but we are doing it parallelly at our own uh, on a commercial basis but with the input that we want to get from india med department it should be available freely as it is being done by noa in us or other uh, ecmwf uh, if it is available we can add value sir uh, is very difficult to reach every each and every kind of uh, application of weather weather is widely used not only in agriculture in fashion industry in automation and everything you know in uh, protection of uh, uh, you know life and property there are several applications but the raw data which you are able to produce is very difficult for a small company like ours to generate and uh, take you to the masses but then we have uh, certain applications where we can assist or we can be used as extended arm of imd in reaching the customers or reaching or giving the uh, uh, forecast in whatever manner is required to be bundled you know it, uh, uh, through an app or through social media we want to do that so uh, i would like to invite your uh, you said that here is open but uh, i think there is certain reservation which is on your side and also on our side yeah so thank you very much uh, vikas singh so i am reiterating what i told uh, little earlier that imd is open for partnership imd is open for collaboration imd is open to provide the data so we have demonstrated it we have been in partnership with google india we have been in partnership with apple we have been in partnership with equweather all of these agencies are utilizing the imd information and they are also disseminating information we have been in partnership with many agencies with respect to agromet advisory services we are providing the forecast based on the forecast they are communicating they are disseminating they are educating making awareness similarly there has been partnership with crofsi for lightning awareness campaign that is a ngo for educating providing information for capacity building so we are open and i will be happy so we will be happy also to have the partnership we can have a collaborative manner and only thing what i want to say that uh, everybody i'm talking that if you just look at any country in the poor weather forecasting the early sectoral applications reaching out capacity building awareness programs disseminations these are carried out with the partnership with the various private agencies and the partners so we are open for all this i is telling that poor early warning services like any other country in the world is the basic objective and basic responsibility of a nodal agency for augmenting or extending the application services to various sectors it is open we are very much hopeful we are hoping for collaborations with anyone in the country so uh, the next question is from uh, vishal vishal am i audible you there yes mr amitabh yeah please please go ahead yeah, thank you uh, dr mohapatra my question was like we are talking about all the technological advancements in weather forecasting and extreme weather uh, particularly right but even today in 2021 right now i can see a lot of news coming uh, coming out from london from sochi russia from china uh, even in india right in northern parts so urban flooding is a big problem yeah and associated disasters so my my question is so uh, of course uh, global uh, the climate change has a role uh, as a big role to play in this disaster that we are encountering you also mentioned in your talk that the weather pattern has become erratic like extreme weather patterns are now more prevalent right so my question is 
uh, has the technological advancement in weather forecasting caught up to the level of uh, predicting erratic and extreme weather in time for people to kind of uh, prevent it and prepare for it what is the lead time between you actually sounding out alarm on an extreme weather alert and people knowing about it yeah so thank you very much for the very pertinent questions uh, uh, i'm just going to tell you that um, the impact of uh, climate change is more prominent in urban areas as there has been a study to compare the impact on rainfall and temperature in urban areas and rural areas it is clearly seen that impact of uh, climate change is more visible in urban areas so in terms of urban flooding certainly because uh, one is the impact of climate change other one is that when you consider an urban agglomeration there actually there is another impact called as urban heat island effect so because of this urban heat island effect the central part of the city gets more rain compared to the outskirts of the city so therefore there is a joint impact uh, uh, global warming and also the urban heat island effect so therefore the whenever you have the heavy rainfall in rural area and also the urban area urban area impact is more the third point is that in urban area the constructions the land use the lead cover is changing very rapidly and the uh, the open space uh, which is available or which was available 20 years back now if you compare the 20 years after you will find that open space in the city itself is decreasing very rapidly so therefore there is no way for run off for the water and also the increase in concrete coverage also limiting the percolation of the water to the ground so as a result the risk due to the urban flooding is increasing and it will increase further so what we do actually we have gone for a uh, scheme called as the south asia passport guidance which covers the urban area and rural area and specifically for urban cities but we do it for last two years you will find that we are providing forecast for different parts and parcels of the city number one and we have gone for development of a urban flood warning system that urban flooding system we have uh, established for mumbai and we are going we are already established for chennai and for kolkata also establishing so the major Uh, cities where urban floods are more prominent that is being targeted first so that is uh, uh, the uh, first point the second point is that uh, because of this global warming the study there has been study so what will be the predictability the study says because of the global warming the predictability of the heavy rainfall event is becoming half so that means if i do not consider the development of the technology i do not consider the improvement of india meteorological department for example then there is a global warming if i was able to predict the heavy rainfall 3 days in advance now because of the global warming i will be able to predict only one and half day in advance it is mainly because that uh, the rainfall is not symmetric now rainfall is occurring in a shorter period and in shorter period you will have heavy downpour so therefore the predictability limit has been almost half because of the global warming but on the other hand if you just look at the forecast accuracy the forecast accuracy has improved i am telling you 24 hour forecast accuracy 10 years back it was just about 60% for heavy rainfall and now it is 80% now similarly there was no forecast beyond 3 days 10 years back now we are providing the forecast up to 5 days for occurrence of heavy rainfall at district level and five day forecast accuracy at present is about 60% that means detecting a heavy rainfall occurrence five days ahead is about 60% so what i want to say 10 years back 24 hours lead period has been now extended to five days lead period certainly there will be a case to case variation but this is the average period over the country average uh, situation over the country so what i want to say in spite of the limitation because of the climate change in the lead period of forecast the forecast lead period has increased from day 1 to day 5 so therefore it has been possible because of the improvement in the monitoring forecasting early warning system of the country at the same time the response system has also improved so as i am telling in 2006 we have got only four doppler radars now we have got 30 doppler radars in the country we have got 730 automatic radar stations we have got high wind speed recorders we have got wind profilers we have got 
all the latest tools. We have got a computing system which was not there at that time. We have got one model only 10 years back, if you just go, only one model. Now we have got six models being run daily twice in Ministry of Art Sciences. The model which has run earlier has the, has the prediction of to only five days. Now it has a prediction of to 10 days. So therefore, there is a tremendous improvement in technology which has been able to fight with the adverse impact of the climate change. Right. Uh, next question is from Sangeeta Bajpai. Uh, please go ahead. Good evening, Dr. Mahapatra. Thank you so much for a fantastically informative session. Um, I am with DPS Arkham, and uh, we do come and visit your uh, IMD every year, except for the last three years where we have been having the pandemic. My question is that uh, could you just explain the heat wave, the unusual heat wave that Canada experienced this time? You want me to explain the Canada heat wave? Yes, yes. in very, very simple terms, sir. If sure. you could just explain that. Thank you so much. Uh, well, thank you. So, actually, it was very, uh, you can say, unprecedented or whatever it may be. So, usually, if you just go to the genesis of heat wave, what happens actually? Um, heat wave is a phenomena where there is a rise in temperature above the normal conditions. And that rise should be about, say, 5 degrees Celsius so that human body cannot adjust to it. So during this period, what happened actually, there was um, uh, subsidence. That means downward movement of the air over that particular region because of the high pressure cell for that region. So therefore, wind was blowing from uh, west to east, and it was um, the warm wind, and also there was subsidence. And that, so when I say subsidence, that means the air is moving towards uh, from top level of the atmosphere to the down. If you look at uh, the tropospheric uh, temperature distribution, troposphere means the lower part of the atmosphere, which extends up to about uh, 10 to 12 kilometers. There, higher you go, cooler you feel. If you remember the um, childhood uh, rhymes, higher you go, cooler you feel. That is valid only in troposphere. So when the air is moving from the top towards the bottom, it uh, goes down, it comes in warmer air. So therefore, it is devoid of any moisture. It does not lead to any cloudy conditions. Any convective clouds does not form. And also at the same time, the temperature increases. So basically, it was because of the high pressure cell located over the region, which led to the subsidence of the air. Right. Uh, the next question is from uh, Ajay Kumar. Uh, am I audible to you guys? Yes, please. Uh, thanks, Anita. And uh, thank you, uh, Dr. Mahapatra, uh, for this very informational session. Uh, so my question is that, uh, you know, in general, we are in a state of denial uh, from what I have observed here throughout this session that, you know, our forecasting quality is uh, top notch. But as we see, uh, we are in a catch up game as far as global warming and climate change is concerned. And since I'm from this uh, climate change sector, I'm seeing that, uh, you know, solar and wind power plants, as they are uh, providing energy, they are supplying energy to the grid. And, you know, uh, these are to be scheduled in advance. And, you know, forecasts are to be provided through weather service providers. These are modeled through extensive uh, machine learning and modeling. So, uh, as I see, uh, their plant load factor is uh, uh, decreasing to the uh, uh, as we say, uh, uh, we uh, always uh, have this uh, number, uh, expected generation, but it doesn't come any closer and plant load factors are decreasing and decreasing. So, you know, how good we are in terms of that, how good uh, we are going to forecast, uh, you know, when we can say that we, we are as close as to the expected generation, because, you know, if uh, this is the scenario that keeps on going. Because, you know, climate is not sparing us. It is going to change again and again. So I just want to understand the context here, how yeah. AMD is uh, trying to, you know, catch up with this. Yeah, fine. Thank you very much. Uh, as you told first, uh, first statement, uh, I am not in state of denial. I am telling you the, what is the achievement, what is the current state of affairs, what are the limitations, what we can do in the future. 
as I explained in my one of the questions, yes, energy sector is a very potential sector. And Minister Parson says has ventured into energy sector. I don't know whether you are taking forecast from Minister of Power Sciences or IMD. Actually, there are three agencies in uh, Minister of Power Sciences which are providing forecast to energy sector. Direct model output is being provided from Indian Institute of Tropical Meteorology and National Center for Meteorology Forecasting. Many energy sectors are availing this opportunity. They are taking the forecast. In addition to that, IMD also provides the direct model output to those who are interested. But in addition, we have developed a platform that is with Osoko collaborations. Um, and under this collaboration, there is a website jointly hosted by Osoko and IMD. There we make availability all types of forecast. I request you and suggest you, if you need the forecast, any of the agency from Minister of Our Senses, please approach us. We'll provide you the forecast for your energy sector. But while going to the energy sector, yes, I know the demand of the energy sector. At present, we have got the forecast for hourly informations of the 36 hours that we provide to the energy sector on um, various parameters. At the same time, the demand for energy sector for load forecasting uh, is every 15 minutes. Every 15 minutes, observations can be provided from automated stations. At the same time, when you go for the wind forecast, or you go for solar energy forecast, you should have a vertical profile of the wind speed and directions and various other parameters. The spot where you are uh, harvesting wind energy or solar energy, there we should have the observations. So we need a collaboration with you. You should share the observations taken from your sector with us so that those observations can be utilized to validate the numerical model which is serving you. So it is a collaboration and we have come up a long way. I request you, please come for collaboration, provide your data, take our data. Let us improve the forecast to the energy sector. Uh, the next question is from Saksham Dangi. Yeah, Saksham. Yeah, so thank you so much for the session, uh, Dr. Mahapatra and Mr. Amitabh Sina. Uh, sir, I had two questions actually. Sir, number one was, uh, did did the COVID-19 induced lockdown that happened from March 24 to almost 3rd of, almost you can say till 17th of May, the second week of May, did it really change the climate per se? Okay. Uh, shall I respond now? Uh, uh, you, have two you, questions. You, you put in both, both parts of the question and we'll respond together. Saksham. Okay, so you go ahead. Go okay, ahead. I'll uh, respond. Uh, there has been um, a worldwide study about the impact of COVID-19. As all of us know, during the lockdown period of the COVID-19, there was a complete stoppage of the transport sector. And because of that, the source of um, pollution was minimized. There were many activities stopped, like construction activities were also stopped in the urban sector in many areas. So therefore, what we find found actually globally that because of the COVID-19, during this lockdown period, the concentration of these pollutants and aerosols arising out of various construction activities decreased. And as a result, the air quality also improved. If you look at Delhi at that time, air quality also improved during this COVID-19. But at the same time, it has also some kind of adverse impact. Uh, it was a good impact on the air quality and hence the environment. Adverse impact in such way that um, the aircrafts uh, did not fly during this lockdown period. And I just want to mention that the aircrafts uh, are the collaborative agencies with uh, all meteorological agencies. IMD also gets the observational data from each and every aircraft. Aircraft on cruise are equipped with various weather sensors. They take the observations for their use and also they take our forecast and they provide those uh, aircraft observations when they land in a particular uh, aircraft. And those observations are utilized in numerical models. Due to this COVID-19 period, number of aircrafts are reduced and hence the observations at the upper level of the troposphere or the flight level were decreased. But it has certain impact in terms of the prediction of the upper level of the atmosphere 
because of this lack of data and the prediction in the numerical models. Otherwise, um, there was some other problems like social problems. For example, I'll tell you, Cyclone Ampan. It was a super cyclone. It was moving towards uh, West Bengal, uh, starting Odisha. It affected Odisha and West Bengal. And uh, I will be happy to inform you that all my colleagues worked together day and night at that time to provide the forecast. In spite of all lockdowns, in spite of all limitations with respect to the basic amenities. And we ensure that no early warning is stopped. And that practice we followed so far. Obeying all COVID appropriate behavior, IMD is working around the clock to provide the forecast and early warning for each and every severe weather event. Uh, the next question is from George Philip. So I had one more question. Oh, okay, okay. Please go ahead. Uh, so, since I am a student of uh, civil services, I have one more question. Uh, so, I mean, the amount of impact that, that has happened has happened. We, we, it's kind of irreversible now. But so, what are the steps that we can take probably in the future so that, you know, the damages are reduced to bare minimum, if not completely zero? You are telling about the impact of COVID-19? No, sir. I'm talking about climate change. I'm talking about like... Uh... Okay, okay, okay. Climate change. Yeah, there is uh, there is a conference of party COP, if you remember the Paris, and uh, there is an agreement to minimize the carbon footprint, to minimize the sources, and hence the um, uh, radiative forcing of various greenhouse gases. So there are the international policies um, formulated by IPCC, Intergovernmental Panel on Climate Change. Accordingly, there is national policy. There is national action plan held by the Honorable Prime Minister. There are various um, um, groups are working uh, under uh, 10 themes, 10 basic themes for the climate action plan in view of the climate change. Similar action is also taken at the state level, in the district level. And uh, apart from that, as Amitabhji was telling, you have the various types of actions towards the uh, causes, towards the detection, towards the projection or predictions, and also towards the impact assessment and the action required from various sectors. So I would say that uh, actions uh, can be expected from individual level to minimize the sources of greenhouse gases by modifying our lifestyle, by modifying our behavior and actions. And also there can be actions from the organized sectors and national and international agencies, government and non-government agencies. So each and everyone has certain responsibilities to minimize the greenhouse gases, which is the major cause for the climate change. There are very simple aspects, or like, for example, we can minimize by adopting the type of agriculture, which will have less emission of greenhouse gases, we can have the system of transport where we'll have less ejection of the gases with the greenhouse in nature. We can have the urban system in such a manner, in a smart system, where you can have uh, minimal impact on the atmosphere. We can have uh, limitation in deforestation. We can go for afforestation so that you can have uh, more capacity to absorb carbon dioxide and release the oxygen. So these are the various, um, uh, you can find out in literature, a lot of actions which can be taken at individual level. Mr. George Philip. Good evening, sir. Uh, my question is regarding the technological uh, equipments. Regarding, uh, so how updated are our weather forecasting equipment and early warning systems as compared to some high-income uh, countries, for example, say the United System and uh, United States. And is there a technological upgradation required for better forecasting in our country? A second question, please. Uh, so, is there a technological upgradation required for better forecasting in our country? Uh, yes. So, already I have uh, responded to this question uh, to Amita Arji, but I will repeat uh, some of the parts. Uh, I just want to say that um, uh, when I came up to Delhi in 2007, the modernization program was taken up and I was appointed as project director for uh, modernization of weather forecasting and cyclone system. So at that time, the process which I followed, that was um, the preparation of vision statement, uh, which was published by uh, 
Minister of Art Sciences. I was one of the author and among many. So we prepared a vision statement. I'll give an example. We told in that vision statement for Cyclone that we'll improve the Cyclone forecast accuracy by 15%, uh, by 20% by 2015, and by 40% by 2020. Similarly, we apprehended that we'll improve the severe weather events by about 15 to 20%. And how, to, how do I do that? So to do that, I went for benchmarking. So we examined the forecasting system, especially the cyclonic system of each and every country in the world. And we identified that USA is a benchmark. I hope all of you are understanding the benchmarking. Benchmark means finding out an idea which you can follow to be at par with him or her. So we went for benchmarking and accordingly at that time, USA's uh, running system was the best in the world, and we planned accordingly, following up a very systematic um, um, strategy and standard operating procedure and roadmap. And as I told you, we are second to none with respect to cycle forecasting at present um, and associated with events. Similarly, if you look at um, the heavy rainfall events, yes, it is also a problem. Heavy rainfall warning is not a problem in India alone, as we have seen in recent times. The floodings in different parts of the globe, even in China, Germany, and uh, other parts of the Europe. So we are improving certainly with a systematic roadmap strategy. Vision 2020 now has been modified to Vision 2030, and we are planning to improve further the cyclone forecast accuracy by about 20% by 2030, and 10 to 15% for other severe weather events, including heavy rainfall. Now. To do that, so we continuously enhance and upgrade our observational systems, including the weather radar, automated weather stations, automated rain gauges. We also go for improving our high power computing systems and numerical modeling systems, as I have told you a little earlier. We also go for improving the decision support systems and hence the early warning systems, uh, considering the requirement or the demand. So we are improving the decision support system for each and every sector. Uh, which uh, will cater to the public and disaster managers. So at the same time, also we utilize the latest tools and technology, for example, artificial intelligence and machine learning. So while we are improving our numerical modeling, we have adopted a dual approach in IMD and Ministry of Arts Sciences. We have the big data of weather in the country. We have the numerical modeling systems. And now we are going for augmenting the artificial intelligence and machine learning. Already, we have an artificial intelligence group within IMD for development of various technology. We have also gone for uh, collaborating with various agencies, including Google and um, various national agencies for development of artificial, te artificial intelligence technology or severe weather event predictions. Also, we have gone for uh, a virtual center in the Ministry of Arts Sciences to meet the requirements of artificial intelligence. So we will be utilizing in the next five years, parallelly, the numerical weather prediction modeling and the artificial intelligence and machine learning best approach to deal with this big data available in the country and hence to provide impact based forecast and risk based warning for various response sections in the country. I'm glad that you touched on that point because uh, uh there were more than one uh, people who were interested specifically in knowing uh, about the use of artificial intelligence and machine learning and weather forecasting uh, in India. So uh, glad that their questions have also been answered. Uh, also, uh, now we move to our last question uh, from uh, Mr. Yash Agrawal. Yash. Good evening, sir. Am I audible? Yes, please. Uh, th uh, thank you so much, sir, for giving such an in uh, informational session. My uh, my question has been asked from my fellow audience members, so I've changed my question. So how many years uh, pa of past data do you use to predict the next data? There are um, different approaches in forecasting. When India Meteorological Department came off in 1875, there was no forecast. And 1923, if I remember correctly, at that time, the British India, the 
Director General of Observatories at that time, they thought of predicting the monsoon. So they searched for various predictors across the globe and they identified something. Based on that, they wanted to predict something. And finally, over the accumulation of observations, um, people thought of analyzing the observations and comparing the observations from day to day basis, developing some kind of analog, and hence predict the way there. Finally, in 1988, um, we came up with a very systematic statistical model for prediction of monsoon rainfall over the country during the monsoon season. It is purely statistical. I'm telling the story because you can find out how the forecasting system has evolved. It was just based on certain parameters. Then we came up with some kind of analysis. Then we came up with a statistical approach. That statistical model was a regression model in 1988. It considered of 16 parameters across the globe. They found out the relationship based on the past data of about, say, 100 years by the time, or say, 70, 80 years. The 1901 onwards, they've got sufficient data. Then based on the history of the relationship between the parameters and the monsoon rainfall, an equation was developed. That is called the regression equation. Based on that, forecast is provided of how much rainfall will be there. But while doing that, what happens actually? It considers the history to remain as strong history for the future. That means relationship between X and Y is whatever we find last year should be valid for the next year. But I will say you, Statistics has very short memory. This memory cannot be taken forward for a longer period. So statistical analysis-based modeling or forecasting system has the limitations. Therefore, people thought worldwide that we should go for numerical modeling. So numerical modeling started in 1930. Amitabh was talking about with an example, Lorenz theory. Yes. So Lorenz came forward with the weather system. He told that weather can be predicted and maximum limit of weather prediction is up to 15 to 16 days. Beyond that, weather cannot be predicted. So then started, people thought of how to predict them. If it is dynamically possible, up to 15 days, we can predict, let us try. Then people came up with observations are available. People came up with developing some kind of mathematical equations, utilizing fluid dynamics. And gradually, the numerical modeling system or dynamic model system. First, one dimensional model came up, then two dimensional, three dimensional, and four dimensional models are available now, where you have got observation from four dimensions. When I say four dimensions, that is x, y, z in the space, t is the time. So, around the clock, a simulation of data in the model is taking place. So, that was the beginning in 1930 and became more serious in 1950. And in our country in 1990s, we came up with numerical modeling system with the establishment of support from uh, system in IMD. National Center for Mid Weather Forecasting was also established in IMD campus now, which is lying in Baida. So that was the history of how we came up. And people realized that statistical modeling will not help. We should go for dynamical modeling system. And accordingly, we do not utilize now the past data only, but also we utilize the current data. That's the current data we go for forecast the weather. Similarly, for forecast the climate also, we consider the historical observational data from the ocean, from the earth, from the atmosphere. And these are fed into numerical models, and hence the climate is also predicted. You'll be happy to know that from 2012 onwards, we have got a dynamical modeling system to provide the long-range forecast of monsoon experimentally. And for the last five years, we are providing the operational long-range forecast of monsoon utilizing this dynamical system and also the statistical system. And from this year, you'll be happy to know that we are providing the forecast for each month and month, and the distribution of rainfall predicted for entire country, which is for the first time in the history of IMD and history of the country. So it is impossible because of the dynamical modeling system, not the statistical modeling system. So dynamical modeling system is the order of the day, and over the years also it will improve further to provide you more and more accurate. Thank you. But uh, before we end, I think uh, there's another question that I must ask you because it has been asked by several uh, people from uh, our audience is uh, a lot of people have asked, uh, how do I become a meteorologist and what are the career opportunities in IMD? So uh, I think you, you must answer that for our audience. Yeah, thank you. So um, meteorology is a branch of science, uh, which is an ascent science, I'll tell you, it's a growing science. 
it's a multidisciplinary science. You will find the role of physics, you will find the role of chemistry, you will find the role of mathematics and computations. You will also find sometimes the role of um, the various allied sciences. So therefore, perhaps uh, in the country, you will not find many institutes providing the, the discipline of meteorology or atmosphere science. But over the years, you will find that there has been very well organized uh, uh, centers, um, certain universities, in many IITs now also you can find out um, the atmosphere science or atmosphere ocean sciences or geosciences or earth sciences. You can also find out in many leading universities and institutes. So, um, but at the same time, when you apply for meteorologist post in IMD or National Center for Engineering Casting or Indian Institute of Meteorology or Indian Institute of Earth Sciences, we ask for multidisciplinary. A physics person also can apply. A mathematics person also can apply. A computer science person also can apply. So please go through the advertisement. And recently also we have recruited and in recruiting process. And we'll be happy to have the new talent in India meteorology. Say that apart from the core discipline, being a physicist also, you can have as a hobby with meteorology. Because by birth, every day in the morning, we predict ourselves what will be the day today. Morning shows the day concept we utilize. So everybody is in the interest of meteorology. So I would say that uh, everyone can be a meteorologist by either profession or by a hobby. And for this purpose, uh, you can read a lot of materials available in IMD's website. We are also open to have some kind of program like startup. So where people can work uh, with IMD's data and they can have their own entrepreneurship. Thank you, Dr. Mahapatra. I, I think uh, that brings us to an end of this discussion. Uh, I think... Uh, uh, you know, big thank you to everyone who joined in. Uh, I hope this session was fruitful. I hope, uh, uh, you know, your questions were addressed and we learned something new. Uh, thank you, Dr. Mohapatra, for, uh, you know, taking the time out, addressing our questions. You know, it's, uh, it's good for, uh, you know, us to put you in touch with our readers. Uh, you know, I, I hope it was fruitful for all of us. Also, uh, you know, I would uh, like to thank uh, our uh, you know, sponsor Plutus IS uh, for their support, uh, without which, uh, you know, these kind of events, uh, they make it possible. So thank you all. Uh, thanks for your time. All right. Thank you very much for giving me an opportunity. Right. Thank you, sir. Plutus IS during COVID-19 crisis offering online fresh batches for the year 21-22-23. Plutus has experienced faculties, interactive classes, answer writing session, doubt session, test series, online mock test, mock interview. So, what are you waiting for? Register yourself on our website plutusis.com. Plutus IS during COVID-19 crisis offering online fresh batches for the year 21-22-23. Plutus has experienced faculties, interactive classes, answer writing session, doubt session, test series, online mock test, mock interview. So, what are you waiting for? Register yourself on our website plutusis.com. So, you can switch up. Okay. Now you can switch up? Yeah, yeah. Thank you. Thanks. So thank you very much. I think uh, how was it? It was uh, yeah, it was good. Good. Right. Okay. So it will be available uh, online sometime somewhere. Yes, sir. I'll I'll share I'll share the link with you. Yeah, you can just share. Huh? So thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks.